Hi thinkers, welcome to the machine learning playlist on thinkxacademy.com. In this tutorial, we are going to study about support vector machines, which is basically used for classification, regression, both. So we are going to cover every important point related to support vector machine. And at the end of this tutorial, you will have a clear idea of what exactly is support vector machines and how it uh, is used as a classification or a regression model in machine learning, right? So the first thing that we are going to discuss is the idea behind uh, support vector machines and what exactly is the use of it. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, draw a graph here which has two dimensions. This is the y axis and this is the x axis. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create some data points related to one class. So let's say there is a uh, black dots represent any one class right so I'm going to draw some points here which belongs to some class A so dot basically represents class A here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use blue crosses to represent another class so we have some more data points here right this is some other class and let's call this class as a class B. So irrespective of what you are going to call these classes, uh, whatever data set you have, let's say you have these data points. If we want to create a decision boundary, so here we are, I'm going to write an important point that we can perform classification only if we are able to draw a decision boundary. So here you can see, let's consider a very simple line here that I'm going to draw. Uh, let's consider this line right it goes something like this and here you can see that this line is a uh, actually a very good line because it is able to actually separate the black uh, points or the class a from the class b in support vector machines what we do is instead of considering all the training examples we only consider a subset of training examples. These data points are not just data points. These are actually vectors, right? That's a major point. In support vector machines, we, we are only concerned with the nearby points to this line. So here you can see that this point is actually near to this line and this point is, lean, uh, is near to this line, right? So we will uh, just pick up a subset of uh, all the training points which are actually near to this line so we are going to actually ignore the data points that are far away from this line so you can see that this data point this one here this one and these these are the data points that we are not going to concern about and similarly here i will pick up uh, these four as the nearby points and i'm going to disregard these circled points because in support vector machines we are concerned with the nearby points and that is the main reason why we call it uh, as a support vector machines because these nearby points are actually the support vectors right so these are the supporting vectors or you can say these are the data points that support the classification that supports this line now we will see how this line and these support vectors are uh, helping us to actually uh, do the classification. Now we have these nearby points. The first thing I will do is uh, I will draw another line right here. Uh, let's draw a line, a green line here. I'm going to draw and let's say it goes something like this, right? So we have this one more green line. And here what I'm trying to do is uh, I have a question which out of these two lines let's say that this is line L1 this is line L2 I have a very basic question uh, out of these two lines L1 and L2 which one do you think is better in performing the classification now at this point we actually don't know that but there is a way to calculate that which is actually the way the support vector machines use so first we do what we do is we have these support vectors which are these eight points we draw a perpendicular uh, distance to the uh, to this line let's say we are actually first concerned about l1 right so we are now considering l1 line here which is this one 
So what I draw uh, do is I draw a perpendicular distance to uh, from the point that we have chosen which is the support vector to this line. I am going to do a similar thing with the other points also. I am going to draw a perpendicular distance something like this to the line L1 right something like this. Now I will calculate the distances using these points right I will pick up this point and let's say I pick up this point I will pick two different points from uh, two different classes and then I will calculate the final distance that will be the distance d right that distance d is actually going to be known as a margin and it is an important term in uh, support vector machines because we will study that this margin the more uh, is this margin so the greater this margin is the better is the line and the better is the classification process so this distance is actually the margin from uh, the two data points and similarly we are going to do it with uh, these data points and these data points in case of line l2 we will do the same thing but here you can see the distances will vary because from this point to this point and this point uh, which is here it will be different right so in both these cases let's say in the first case i obtain d1 and in the second case which is l2 i obtain d2 and d1 is actually a margin right let's say this is actually a margin so more is the margin of the line from the nearby support vector the better is that uh, particular line in performing the classification right so let's take a look at this new example here and here you can see i again have two classes and here you can see i have three hyperplanes which is h1 let's call it as h2 and let's call it as h3 so basically a hyperplane we will discuss more uh, about that in a bit but hyperplane is basically a plane which actually represents the number of dimensions minus one number of dimensions right so here you can see uh, we have two dimensions and uh, this is two dimensional space so a hyperplane will be of one dimensional and one dimensional means a line if we are considering uh, uh, this in 3d so if we have n equals to 3 so 3 minus 1 will give a two dimensional plane and that is basically a concept of hyperplane so if i just try to um, draw a graph here which is actually like this and let's uh, visualize this in 3d so if i will visualize that these are the points in 3d and not in 2d so what i can do is i can actually create a graph uh, a hyperplane will be of two dimensional so we will use a two dimensional hyperplane to basically distinguish between uh, these data points right all right so let's move on back to this example we have to uh, we have these three hyperplanes which are basically lines so i'm going to call them as hyperplanes because these are uh, n minus one dimensions and since we know that support vec uh, vector machines will support n number of dimensions so we are going to call these as hyperplanes so out of h1 h2 and h3 which one uh, do you think is the best for uh, doing the classification and i've already told that we have a parameter which is known as margin which we can use uh, to actually find out which one out of these is better so the more is the margin right if this margin is more the better is the classification the better it separates right so i'm going to write here the better it is going to create a separable line so better it separates the classes so that's a very important point so now let's consider h1 and since we are considering only support vectors let's consider this point which is here and we will draw a line something like this which is the perpendicular distance and let's say out of these points this one is here so i will create another perpendicular distance to this line i will sum these two up and i will be able to get a distance d i will call it as d1 so here you can see this is the distance d1 now let's consider h2 in h2 you can see this point uh, is near so i'm going to create a perpendicular distance to this h2 line and out of these you can see this one seems near so i will draw a 
another perpendicular distance and now what I will do is I will calculate the distance d2 now visually from here uh, can you tell me that uh, which one of these is higher so you can see that margin uh, d1 plus uh, d1 is actually this and this the whole distance which is here and uh, you can see that this d1 is actually lesser than uh, the margin which we have here in case of d2 right uh, now if i uh, try to draw another line here let's call it as d3 which goes somewhat here right let's call it as line h4 from here you can see i have this uh, data point which is near and i will calculate the distance again from here to here and again this one is near so i will calculate this again so you can see we obtain some another margin in case of h3 you can see that here we have the nearest point is this one so i will just draw a very a perpendicular to this line and you can see that these points are actually here and out of this we can see that maybe this is near so basically you can see that this will uh, be actually very minimal so if i choose any of these points uh, if i choose this point this will be actually a negative distance because it is actually lying in the class b right it is on the side of class b so we will have to make it a negative so that minimizes this distance d3 right so out of these four lines h1 h2 h3 you can see that h4 is actually having the largest margin from the support vectors which are the nearby points and you can see uh, logically also it is very correct that how it works logically you can see the working of svm that we are just trying to draw a line which has uh, a very maximum margin so there is a concept known as maximum margin hyperplane right so the maximum uh, is the margin to the hyperplane the better is the svm classification model and it is clear by the logic because the more you will have the margin the more the data points are uh, separate from each other so there are uh, so that will give us a very good uh, line which will be able to clearly separate out the distance so how the svm algorithm works basically is the svm will particularly pick up a subset of uh, these uh, training examples and it will keep drawing a hyperplane and it will keep calculating the margins and uh, it will pick up all the subsets in this training examples all the possible uh, subsets which are near to some hyperplane and it will calculate various planes which is h1 h2 h3 and h4 there will be n number of hyperplanes and out of that it will pick up a hyperplane which has the maximum margin and that's the concept of maximum margin hyperplane and that's how the svm basically works in the next uh, coming upcoming tutorials of this uh, series we are going to cover various things in svms we will first mathematically derive how we can calculate the maximum margin hyperplane we will derive the formula to find out the distance d1 and we will use linear svms which are very important and linear SVMs there are two different types which we are going to cover which is the if we have a linearly separable data right so you can see that this data set that I have shown you here is actually a linearly separable data the second case is the linearly inseparable data right so one more impo one major important difference from linear regression and support vector machines can be also derived from here that in linear uh, regression we can only get uh, we have we are limited to two dimensions and we are also uh, limited to linearly separable data if the data is not separable using a line i cannot use linear regression and that's why svms are very important because they can help us to actually use some kernel tricks which we will again we will use it in the upcoming tutorials we will study this whole topic and all of these topics in detail so basically let me just first uh, show you an example of a data set which is not linearly separable so let's just do something like this 
I will first uh, draw some points like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create data points of class B. Right, so you can see here this is the data points of this class B. So now you can see here I have no way to create a line that will be able to separate one class to the another. This type of data set is known as linearly inseparable data set and uh, basically linear regression will fail at this point but SVMs will not because there is a kernel trick that can actually help us uh, transform this type of a graph because support vector machines supports uh, n dimensions right so what we can do is we can use a kernel trick i will just show you a gist of what exactly it looks like so i will just draw a, another graph here now you can see that this is actually a 2d representation what i can do is i can actually use a kernel trick which what uh, is it does is it converts the uh, data from two dimensional to let's say three dimensional and it uses this formula uh, z equals to x square plus y square and you can see that this is uh, how what it will do is it will actually give you data points something like this so the class a will now have data something like this and the class b which is represented using this blue color will be somewhat here let's say right so this is actually a kernel trick why we call it as a kernel trick because we are actually transforming uh, the one dimension to some other dimension uh, which is here and why we are doing that is because now we are able to get a hyperplane which can separate uh, these two data points right so i can actually draw a hyperplane that can actually separate these two data points from each other so that's what we are going to cover in detail using mathematical formulas and we will also implement this in python also so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching